What's going on guys? This is Moonchild the Dude No Way and today I got a PvE build for every class that puts out massive damage. The loadout we're covering is one of the nastiest combos ever in Destiny 2 and in this video I'm going to break down the weapons, mods, and exotics you need to make it happen. This is going to be a ton of information so later on I'll throw a graphic on screen with everything I'm talking about in an easy to read format. Screenshot it with your phone so you can reference it while you're setting up. No matter what class you are, to become a PvE monster, the first thing you're going to want to grab is the Wither Horde Exotic Grenade Launcher. This is one of my personal favorite weapons in the game, because when you fire, it leaves a blight on the ground that damages enemies over time. This hits hard enough to melt a group of red bars in seconds. Minions of the Darkness are not the brightest crayons in the box. They'll run right through the fire like every blueberry you've ever found on LFG. And shooting the ground isn't the only way to use this weapon. If you direct impact an enemy, they're going to start burning out. If they die while affected by Wither Horde, they crap out a blight on the floor for you, and you can use this to easily clear out rooms full of enemies. On its own, this grenade launcher is amazing, because it deals damage over time and you can swap to something else to keep DPSing while everything burns to death. There are a ton of great options to pair with this. Slug shotguns like First In Last Out can really dumpster a boss, but if you run that, you're competing with Wither Horde on the special ammo economy. For that reason, the combo you're looking for is a solid heavy weapon and hardly anything in the game can touch the damage of swords. Falling Guillotine is the go-to legendary option for close range damage. Even after a bunch of tuning, this thing still hits like a truck, and it has one of the sickest heavy attacks in the game. You can snag one for yourself as a world drop, or by turning in tokens to Banshee 44 in the tower. These two weapons together is a tactic I call Wither Sword, and the damage this does is nuts. When you start going off, it's rest in peace to any boss or yellow bar enemy but with the power of mods, we can take it from strong as hell to downright overpowered. The mod Blast Radius makes you charge with light whenever you get a double kill with a grenade launcher or a rocket launcher. This means every time Wither Horde melts a group of red bars, this mod is guaranteed to proc. Slot Lucent Blade and High Energy Fire to buff your weapon's damage and spend those charges. Lucent Blade gives you a 25% boost to all sword damage for 5 seconds after striking a target. This is an arc specific mod, and it has to go on an arc piece of armor or you won't see it as an option to slot. I apologize in advance for how many times I'm about to say arc. Lucent Blade has a secondary effect that makes your sword heavy attacks recharge faster, which is amazing and synergizes perfectly with guillotine and that sweet spin attack. Here's the rub. You gotta slot another arc mod somewhere in your gear for this to activate. The cheapest arc mod is arc damage resistance on your chest. This is only one energy and it does work, but I don't recommend you use it, and I'll tell you why in a minute. As far as other options go, gloves are also off the table in my opinion, because to slot momentum transfer you have to give up either a reload or a champion mod. No thanks. But if we swing over to an arc pair of boots, invigoration is looking mighty sexy for only one energy. You miss out on having a second scavenger mod, but that's a small price to pay. If you're getting value out of this, like the video to help me move to full time content creation by 2022. Our other spender high energy fire is far less complicated. It's a flat, simple 20% buff to weapon damage. This affects all your weapons, but it doesn't stack with Lucent Blade. Destiny only takes into account the highest damage buff active, but High Energy Fire is for Wither Horde and your primary. Part of what makes this loadout so good is you can run basically any energy weapon, subclass, or exotic armor you like best. The Ikelos Submachine Gun or the Seventh Seraph Sidearm are great picks for primaries. Both of these weapons can spawn more mine cells, which are disgustingly good ad clear. But really, it doesn't matter what goes in this slot. This build is insane because the working parts that make it shine are fully self-contained. Whether you're a top tree Dawnblade with transverse of steps or a revenant hunter with mask of Bakris, you're getting the same bang for your buck. And the strategy you want to use against bosses and yellow bars is as follows. Step 1. Direct impact them with Wither Horde. Step 2. Cut that motherfucker to pieces. If you're charged with light, Wither Horde's damage is going to be buffed by 20%, and as soon as you make contact with Guillotine, Lucent Blade is going to activate and now your sword hits like a truck. If it's a boss you're fighting, when you get into melee range, it's probably going to try to stomp you out. Which brings me to what I was saying earlier about not using arc damage resistance in your chest. The reason being is two of the most crucial mods in this build compete for the same space. Concussive Dampener gives you a hefty damage resistance to anything that deals splash damage. Most bosses use these types of weapons, and this is going to make sure those couple of shots that hit you on the approach don't put you down. When you get there, the mod melee damage resistance gives you that same 25% reduction to anyone in close range. This means stomp mechanics are going to hurt a lot less. You can't deal damage when you're dead, so make sure you slot these mods so you can live to fight another day. This loadout works so well that when I took it into Gambit, I ended up carrying the team harder than I ever have. The ad clear was amazing, and by the end, the enemy team was just depositing their final motes when our primeval bit the dust. When you look at the scoreboard, 
Not only did I deposit more motes and kill more PvE enemies than anyone on the team, when we flip to the next page, I dealt like 10 times as much primeval damage as the guy in second place. And speaking of Gambit, I heard a lot of you guys are really enjoying the game mode, so I'm gonna break down some tactics, subclasses, and exotic armor pieces you can use to help you win more games. To check that out, all you gotta do is click the card on the right. Thanks for watching. I am Moonchild of Dude No Way, and I will see you in the next video.